this is Srimad Bhagavatam 824 5. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhupada goes step by step again. Yeah. You know? And so in this one, translation, Sri Sukadev Goswami said, O king, for the sake of protecting the cows, yeah. Brahmins, mm. demigods, mm. devotees, yes. the Vedic literature, again, religious principles, mm. and fulfill the purpose of life. Yes. The Supreme Personality of God it accepts the forms of incarnations. Mm. So it's not just cows right. or Brahmins, right. but Prabhupada has a whole list Correct. of auspicious personalities and attributes which need to be protected. Yes. Um, so Srila Prabhupada's purport. And if you take each sentence as a, a step or a point, yeah. Prabhupada spells it you out. You can make a PowerPoint on each sentence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can. <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's a thought. <laughs> Purport, the Supreme Personality of God it generally appears in various types of incarnations. Why? Mm -hmm. To give protection to the cows and Brahmins. Mm -hmm. The Lord is described as Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha. In other words, he is always eager to benefit the cows and Brahmins. Yeah. When Lord Krishna appeared, he purposefully, this wasn't some, you know, Accident. Yeah. <laughs> That's Probably. an important word. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 He purposefully became a cowherd boy and showed personally yeah. how to give protection to the cows and calves. This is how we do it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Similarly, he showed respect to Sudama Vipra, a real Brahmana. Yes. <clears throat> From the Lord's personal activities. There is a mandate yes. from the Lord's personal activities. Um, There's a mandate in your purport. From the Lord's personal activities, you're, you're in <laughs> human society should learn how to give protection specifically to the Brahmins and cows. Yes. We should do this. Yes. Then. If we do this, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. second step, the protection of religious principles, fulfillment of the aim of life, and protection of Vedic knowledge can be achieved. Yes. If we do this, right. then these things will follow. Mm -hmm. Now, Prabhupada kind of puts a little kibosh. <laughs> Without protection of cows, Brahminical culture cannot be maintained. Yes. That's very clear and very strong. Yeah. And without Brahminical culture, the aim of life cannot be fulfilled. Mm. One, two, three. Yeah. I mean, Prabhupada just goes through step by step by step. Yes. The Lord, therefore, is described as Go Brahmana Hitaya because his incarnation is only for the protection of the cows and Brahmins. Yes. Unfortunately, because in Kali Yuga there is no protection of the cows in Brahminical culture, everything is in a precarious position. Okay. Okay. Now, Prabhupada throws in the big if. Yes. If, society, if, if human society wants to be exalted, the leaders of society must follow the instructions of Bhagavad Gita and give protection to the cows, the Brahmins, and Brahminical culture. So it's, it's going from theoretical to practical right. application. Yes, yes. <clears throat> uh, one of the most uh, clear and um, powerful purposes mm -hmm. uh, on this point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I often, I'm sure as you do, make reference to this purpose. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's step by step. It, it's not a big, you know... Yeah, Phil is long philosophical. This, this, this is uh, this purport uh, and the and the and the verse are totally in line with this verse I was missing yesterday. Mm -hmm. Isn't it from the Mahams uh, uh, mm -hmm. Some some references there that uh, if we protect the cows, the brahmanas will be protected. If the brahmanas are protected, the whole world will be protected. Huh. Same That's thing. a good one too. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. You know, you st it starts with cows. If we protect the cows, mm. 
then the brahmanas will be protected in that they they will um, they will not become unemployed. <laughs> Without cows, brahmanas become unemployed. Mm. When brahmanas become unemployed, there are no more samskaras, there are no more religious activities, and therefore everyone goes to hell. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, it's, it's mm. the same the same message, and that's why one of the reasons that helps should help all of us understand that cows are for everyone. As you mentioned mm -hmm. rightly, you know, cows are mm -hmm. part of our dharma. The cows actually is the beginning and the basis of our dharma, of our of, of sanatan dharma, of uh, because we can we cannot we cannot expect to please Krishna. We cannot expect to please Krishna if we don't please Krishna's cows. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, uh, you have children, I come and I associate, and I neglect your children or insult them or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how can we practice Krishna consciousness? And especially, you know, it's so obvious in modern day society, the atrocities that are going on. I mean, you know, it, it's even hard to, to, to talk about it. But how can we, how can we neglect <laughs> And unfortunately, you know, we're doing something, but it's very meager. <laughs> very meager. Very, That's very all. It's very yeah. meager. Yeah. You, know. you know, it's like... Uh, and it our just, understanding is also... Uh, one grain of sand in the yes. thousands of beaches. Yes. It's yes. just... We, we are failing to understand that it's not just a question of doing more, but it's a question of actually building our lives around cows. It's, it's a cow culture... Vedic culture is a cow culture. Vedic economy is a, a cow dung economy. It's, you know, it's that simple. And uh, all the panchagavya uh, products. And, and I, I, whenever I get an opportunity, I, I, I put this point across, which initially is a little shocking and not easy to digest. But it's directly in line with uh, our Vedic culture, it's directly in line with, in line with what Srila Prabhupada wanted us to do. Our preaching now, as we see, is in the cities. Most people live in the cities mm -hmm. and Prabhupada established, you know, the Iskand temples in the cities. So our preaching basis is in the cities. But we should not be living in the cities. Our living basis is meant to be the country. One has to think about this a little bit. Means we should be commuting to the cities, not commuting <laughs> to the to, to the, the country <laughs> for a retreat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, for a retreat. We should be living in the country, and we would have no need to, to go to our retreat. You know, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, and and we should be going to the cities for the purpose of preaching. And if we're not preaching, we should not go to the cities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Prabhupada was preaching this point. In, in conversations on Varnashram that he was having with many of his major leaders way back in 75, 76. And that goes along with the whole concept that, you know, for every city temple, there was to uh, be a absolutely. farm. Absolutely, yes. That yes. would be supplying the yes, milk yeah. products and the vegetables and the... Yes, but that was meant to be also a stepping stone towards having villages. Towards villages having do, a yeah, home. That's true. It's a different concept than a farm. Yeah. It, exactly. it means going beyond farm, having many farms. If you exactly. have many farms, then you, you make a community. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. The word farm is not the right. Yeah. It should be village. Yeah. Not farm. Yes. I mean, you need so many people in the farm to run anything anyway. Correct. And they do it properly. How many families, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah. We, how much help do we need <clears throat> to take care of what we're doing, you know? It's like you need more than us, two people, you need, you know. Yeah, but actually we have to analyze because what has happened like in North America and possibly other countries is that, you know, uh, traditionally one person or one family is not meant to look after 100 acres. Right. Now they have, you know, they have passed uh, through legislation and uh, that's how it is in, in municipalities. You cannot build... Mm -hmm. I don't know how it is here, but in Canada it's like that. Mm -hmm. If it's agricult if it's zoned as agricultural mm -hmm. land, you can have only one residence. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, so you have 100 acres. So this is, a this is a deviation because traditionally, as Papa says, you know, the standard, the, the norm is that a family has a couple of acres. You know, yeah, yeah. with one or two yeah. acres and yeah. one or two cows, yeah. you can meet your basic needs. Your basic needs. Yeah. So in villages, people, I mean, it, 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 it's like, I would say, yeah, in many ways, a, a, a deviation or uh, we do this now in the Western countries because we are exploiting and we're using mm -hmm. machinery and all these things, right? Yeah, which is adding to the deviation mm -hmm. in so many ways. We actually, I would say that the root problem to many of this is that we have failed in the Western ideology, Western practice, especially. We have failed, possibly, we have possibly never understood some of the basic principles and concepts of the Vedic culture. Mm -hmm where one doesn't sell land, one doesn't sell cows, mm. yeah, one doesn't sell education or knowledge. Mm. You know, mm. I, I often quote, it's, it's in the Mahabharata, Bhishma Dev, when he's instructing the Pandavas. So there's a quote there where Bhishma Dev himself is mentioning. And uh, I forget, there's another verse where Mother Saraswati, she prays that to Brahmanas, to uh, one particular Brahman, please don't give me to anybody. Mm. Because knowledge in the wrong hands mm. is not good. Yeah, it will destroy. So knowledge is, is meant to be, uh, as one example, knowledge is meant to be a, a, a gift, is meant to be gifted to deserving persons. So in the West, it's like, you know, we, we think that knowledge and education is everyone's right. It's not actually everyone's right. It's everyone's privilege. It is a privilege. Like bhakti. Devotional service is a privilege, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it one has to qualify to, 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 to be around devotees to get the mercy get the of the privilege. Lord. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cannot demand it. So, so, so when, when many of these basic principles are not in place, Naturally, the whole thing is not going to work. Yeah. You know, we don't know the basic science of the economy, for example, which which is connected with land and cows. That that is sustainable economy. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten that, and we're doing agriculture for the wrong purpose, mostly. You know, because because in the Vedic culture, you provide. You know, what is it? Um, um, produce what you need and use what you produce. Right. Mm. <coughs> kind of centered around that, you know, and and so there's no need for uh, you know when when everyone is there, when that culture is there, people don't need money right, per right. se. Yeah. yeah, per se, their wealth is yeah. there in what it's they right. have and what they yeah. produce yeah. and all these things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Prabhupada yeah. explained about that in in uh, Krishna book, mm. in chapter five, <clears throat> um, where the residents of Vrindavan are going to. Um, the birth ceremony of, of Lord Krishna. Yes. <clears throat> and Nanda Maharaj, um, the, 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 the gopis and, and the gopas end up having this big food fight where they're throwing butter and, and you know, all different milk products on each other mm. because they were so wealthy. Yes. They could. Yes. And Prabhupada explains that they were decked out in these very beautiful saris and, mm. and pearls and gold, and yeah. Prabhupada said, they were simple village people, <laughs> but because of taking care of the cows, they had so much. their wealth was yes. based on um, yes. the products from the cows. Yes, yes. very wealthy, actually. Mm -hmm. Very wealthy. Yes, yes. I was mentioning this point, as a matter of fact, in Bhagavatam class this morning, mm -hmm. how before the British came to India, so we're not, oh. it's not only 5,000 years ago. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's, it's not just part of old books that, you know, did it really happen or not. Yeah, yeah. Very just cool. a couple of hundred years ago, before the British came, yeah. they have recorded in the annals of history uh -huh. how the production of food, for example, in those days was 10 times more than it is today. Uh -huh. Villages were opulent. Yeah. People did not have to lock their doors. Hmm. You know, um, the, the, the villagers were, were, were very polite. They had, you know, uh, means 
when there's proper leadership, which of course begins with, you know, it's connected with the, the purport as well, you know, brahmanas, when people were looking after cows, they were being directed by brahmanas as well. Uh, and therefore people, you know, their, their basic necessities and beyond that were, 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 were looked at for like with the, mm -hmm. the example you're giving. And people were happy and they were opulent. They were opulent spiritually and they were opulent materially. So we really have to, uh, very important actually for us, especially as devotees, we need more devotees to actually read the kind of purports, for example, you know, and actually really meditate on them and, 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 and understand them, you know, mature in our, in our understanding of what, of what uh, Shiva Prabhupada is, uh, of what Bhagavatam is telling us and, and how Prabhupada is, is expanding on that and how to put that into practice as well. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, our process is the more we hear about it and the more we can remember it, then the more we'll be, uh, become convinced and the more others can also become part of this. Yeah, that's about, it seems, what, that's almost what only what one can do is <laughs> is to keep talking about yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's almost like I mean it seems so. What well, you were speaking about that whole uh, 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 research on the whole uh, concept of an ashram and then and then you make this presentation with mm -hmm. that and that that possibly that would become the foundation from which with practical yes recommendations yes yes you know I mean that that makes sense. Uh, even then, I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, because, that's because it's been a long time. Yes. And, and, and you know, uh, will this do the trick, so to speak? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Will this do the trick? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, exactly. It's like, cause, you know, okay, even if the facts are there, you know, what, what motivates? Right, right. What yeah. is going to motivate? Well, Krishna may have to pull the plug. Mm -hmm. Well, we keep so he keeps saying that, but it never happens. Uh, well, you know, uh, Prabhupada, said, Prabhupada said it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, he definitely, definitely, yeah, so definitely. Because, especially because he said it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, true. true. And uh, even many people who are not, you know, devotees, they know that it, 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 some things are around the corner. Oh, you know? yeah, everybody anticipates. Yeah. There, there's you know. um, uh, a fellow by the name of Schumacher. Okay. He wrote a book called Small is Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I read that. Yeah, he was considered, yeah, it's not, it's not a current, but it's, it's right. been around a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. He was considered as a world-class economist. Okay. Mm. Now, the first part of this book, the first few chapters, is about um, fossil fuel. Uh -huh. And how he is explaining how fossil fuel is a non-renewable resource. Yeah. Mm. Right now, our societies, for most of the planet, are based on Fossil fuels. Correct. Um, so, and being as a non-renewable resource, it's just a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. We okay. may see it in our lifetime. We may not. Right. But right. Um, <clears throat> the next chapter after the fossil fuels is about nuclear energy. Mm. And it's a good source. It gives a lot of energy off a little bit of uh, fuel. Right. But mm. the waste... The residual coming okay. from this fossil fuel is so highly toxic. Yeah. They have no idea how to deal with right, it right, 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 without, right. you know, completely poisoning yeah. um, everything. Tokyo. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the, the tsunami, the yeah. nuclear reactors going down, <laughs> polluting, yeah, yeah. you know. The, yeah, and they, don't, they really don't have any Hawaii. idea of the long-range yeah, yeah, yeah. effect. Yeah, yeah, correct. They don't really yeah. know. And then he gives uh, a Buddhist axiom. Mm. The Buddhist axiom is that the success of the village can be seen by what comes out, by how much comes from outside the village. Yes. In farming, it's called off-farm inputs or on-farm inputs. Okay. So what comes from outside decreases the productivity and um, wholeness. Yes. Of the village. Oh, okay. What comes from inside, if you can be completely dependent from on-farm inputs, 
Yes. Then you are a hundred percent successful. Yes. On farm inputs and off farm inputs. Off farm. On and off. On yeah. and off. Mm -hmm. So what comes yeah. from from the farm as your your closed cycle of uh, yes. uh, productivity? You know, for your fields, your your cow dung, blah blah yes. blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Your production of your own seeds, so on yeah. like this. But if you're bringing, you know, um, right. petrochemical fertilizers from off the farm, then this is uh, detrimental to the success yeah. of the village. It really goes to that uh, proverb or saying that, you know, produce only what you need and yeah. use only what you produce. Yeah, kind of. yeah right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, something like this, the vast majority of people cannot understand them because of the way we're living, you know, in, in, in the cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and, and maybe a little bit of theoretical understanding, but, you know, then to take that on the, to, to apply that is, is something else. You know, it's like, at least to me, it's a phenomenon that um, it seems that there are non-devotees, more non-devotees almost, who, who are seeking this yes. than there are devotees who have the philosophy <clears throat> there and that's a phenomenon to me because you know like it's amazing. We, we get this publication from the farmer's journal what is that then small farmer's journal small farmer's journal and it's all these stories of these young couples yes. and guys you know yeah. out there with their either yeah. horses and oxen yeah. and getting their land homesteading yeah. and because they firmly believe uh, yes yes one might come to the conclusion maybe I should become a non devotee right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well yeah <laughs> well the, the thing but, is that's not that's not that's not what I was indicating <laughs> I know I know but, but the, <laughs> the, the point is that you know there's something what is blocking it within, it's almost like there's something blocking it within our philosophy yeah, yeah, it's yeah. almost like it's like now this is if I, I'm not criticizing Varnashram. It's just a phenomenon. Yes, yes. It's like everybody wants to be the Brahmin. Right. Nobody wants to be the Sudra or the Vaishya. I mean, right. maybe Vaishya. Certainly not the Sudra, but yeah, and, yeah. and questionable the Vaishya, depending on what country you yeah, are in. Yes. Or, or what activities you know? your, your Vaishya, certainly not farming, cert certainly doing business. Yeah, 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 business, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Because it's considered, it's, it's really there in the psych, yeah. then it's lower. Right. Instead of that, this is really, this is great, this is honorable, you know, it's very exciting, and da da da, you know, I mean, it's looked upon that way. Whereas the non devotees, they're like, you know, it's almost like this is the honorable thing to do because we're going to be close to the earth, we're going to develop our own foods, we're going to be homesteading, we're going to be independent of this corrupted and falling apart society. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a, I fully. Uh, support what you're saying and, and, and that it, it, it's a very intriguing phenomena, uh, amazing phenomena that some, many actually a good number of people who are non-devotees understand some of these points better than our own devotees. Yeah. I mean, it's like I... Yeah, it's, it's like mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> yeah. And it's like... We want to use the Varnashram concept to develop these villages, you know, the, the purity of the Varnashram concept, right. to develop the villages to, to create a situation where the cow, more cows can be protected yes. and, and they live the lifestyle at the same time. Yes. That, that, that concept has, is be somewhat twisted presently. But uh, yeah. I think we also need to acknowledge the fact that most people who are, let's say, non-devotees and who are going for this, Generally, there's all kinds of material catches. Oh, I mean, yeah, they have no, they don't have any yeah, right. spiritual just, philosophy yeah, 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 to yeah, live, yeah, to, to, to yeah. do it with. Correct, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, they may have some innate respect for the earth, you know, right, right, and they respect right. like that, you know, this is God given. Right. But other than that, there's right. nothing. Yeah, yeah. Really. So, I mean, I, you know, Not really they can't develop so, a society with yeah. it, they can't develop villages. It's not. You it's know. not a really substantial kind of. No. You know, yeah. But you, 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 you got the people willing to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, well, because there are yeah. statistics where uh, you know. it has been uh, proven or established that uh, you know for so many years people are trying to create communities. For example, mm -hmm. like ninety or ninety-five percent of them have failed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I mean, so so. Uh, we see, of course, a number of people in their ring, and some of them are succeeding, but in general, 
they w they're destined to fail because they're missing the essential. Yeah, the foundation mm -hmm. yeah. To, yeah. to keep it glued together. Yeah. 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 Right. But, um, One thing that I do um, when I give a garden class, mm -hmm. you know, I think, oh, we're, we're going to go to a garden class, we're going to learn about compost and uh, nitrogen and all these different things and, you know, fertilizers. But especially for the devotees, I give a garden class which is based on the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Because I want them to be able to relate the philosophy to the actual application mm -hmm. of that philosophy in okay. agriculture. Okay, right. So I usually start off with how many references are there in Bhagavad Gita to agriculture? Mm -hmm. And so you can see some people's Minds are going, boop, boop, boop. some people are going, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, because we, we want to start the connection with the cows and the land. Mm. And ultimately, it's always an offering to, to Guru and Krishna. Yes. So, Krishi go Rakshavani down. Mm. Krishi is agriculture specifically with the bulls, yes. where the bulls are walking on the earth. And they're plowing, and this is like a massage for Mother Bhumi. Mm -hmm. The walking of the bulls are mm -hmm. massaging. Oh, and she's going, Oh, mm -hmm. all right, you more, know. more. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're passing urine, and she's, yeah. Oh, nice, warm nutrients. Yeah. And, I'll be yeah, sick. <laughs> yeah. and, and passing, you know, down, yeah. and, you know. So she is relishing this, yeah. you know. And so now we have, you know, plowed with the bulls. Prabhupada explains in, in Bhagavatam when, when um, I think it was one sixteen eighteen, that the duty or the dharma of the bull is to plow the agricultural fields mm -hmm. and produce the food grains, not only for his family, but for the human family as well. Yes. So the two fathers are working together, side by side, shoulder to shoulder, mm -hmm. the human father, the bovine father. Right. So now the, the fields have been plowed. Um, and... In, in planting a crop, what is the next thing that you need? Mm. You need seeds. Right. And what does Krishna say in Bhagavad Gita about seeds? Mm -hmm. Krishna says that he is the seed-giving father of all living entities. Yes. So you're holding Krishna in your hand. Right. It may not be in the, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right. playing the flute like this, but according to what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, yes. that he is a seed giving father. So Krishna has given these gifts. Right. You see. So in this one little seed, it may be a tomato plant, mm. it may be a pepper plant, mm. it may be okra plant, it may yeah. be bitter mouth. So Krishna. Ah. <laughs> so these seeds go in the ground. Mm. Okay. So the next thing, in order for these seeds to start to grow, what do you need? Mm. You need water. Right. See. So there's a couple of you know, we're by chanting Hare Krishna, you know, performing this um, this jaga of chanting Hare Krishna, the rains will come. Yes. But Krishna also says that he is the taste of water. Mm -hmm. So now Krishna is sending the living entities through the rain mm -hmm. and they're entering the seeds and so now life is starting. Mm -hmm. So after a few days, maybe a week or two weeks, every seed takes a little different time to germinate. What happens? You start seeing these little sprouts. sprouts. Mm -hmm. So in these different sprouts are different devotees. Mm -hmm. They're taking birth on the dam. Mm -hmm. The intention of our doing agriculture is to feed Krishna, to feed Guru. Mm -hmm. see. So Krishna is sending these different living entities <coughs> to take birth in these different types of bodies, whether it's tomato plant or whatever. Yes. And it also gives us the opportunity for service. Mm -hmm. So now these little, these living entities that come, and we get the opportunity to serve them. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. we have to keep the weeds away. Yes. We have to cultivate. Just like Prabhupada has given us the bhakti lata beej. Yes, he's given us the seed of devotional service within our hearts, mm -hmm. and he's told us how to keep it nicely. Yes. So don't commit any offense. You keep the weeds away, you water it nicely with Srinam Prabhu yes. so it can grow nicely. Yes. And so the same thing is true. Mm -hmm. So I use the example of Bhakta tomato. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. which my wife rolls her eyes. <laughs> She's heard this many times. <laughs> so about the tomatoes come, right. and he is growing, he is growing, and we get to serve him in his process, mm -hmm. keeping the weeds away, watering if necessary, right. tying the, uh, the plant up so he doesn't fall over. Right. And then at a certain point in time, the fruits come. Mm -hmm. so, so is Bhakta Tomato, is he going to get up and walk into the kitchen and say, Look, please, these are the fruits of my labor. Mm -hmm. Can you make a nice chutney for Radharani? Mm -hmm. No. Again, we have to serve him in his service. Correct. So there's so many other references uh, to agriculture in, in Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. um, I am the, the seed, the flower bearing spring, anyway, and so on. I am the fragrance of the earth. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. But in this process, we can see Krishna through Bhagavad Gita in agriculture in so many different ways. Hmm. Not only that, we can apply the philosophy of Das and Das, Om and Das. Hmm. From preparing, we're, we're serving the cows in their service in, in the plowing, um, hmm. in planting the seeds. Um, and yeah. through the whole growth of um, development of these plants, we're serving them in their service to Guru and Guranga. Yeah. And on top of that, Krishna is giving us the humble pill. Mm -hmm. Because in doing agriculture, how many times do you have to bow your head, Chetudar Panamajana? Mm -hmm. How many times you are planting the seed? Yeah, you are cultivating. Yes. You are picking the fruits. Mm -hmm. See, like this. It's, it's constant. Have you that, made a PowerPoint on this? <laughs> no, I was thinking, I hope we can get this from you. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Yeah, sure. So, in this way, the philosophy is being applied. Yeah. It, it's not theoretical. It's not, right, oh, right. I've got to go yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get dirty today. Yeah. I'm going to get sunburn. I'm going to get, you know, calluses on my head. Yeah. But no, it's a practical application of Bhagavad Gita. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, you know all of these plants. You know about the tomato. You know yeah. uh, uh, about the pepper. You know all yeah. the marigolds. Right. You know, and so you're plucking the flowers, and you may make the garlands yourself, or you may give it to the pujari, and the pujari is making the garland. Right. And then when the curtains open, that greeting of the deities, and you see Krishna with this beautiful flower garland on his chest, mm -hmm. yes. and you have to wonder, yeah. who are these living entities? Right who are producing these flowers right. that are sitting on Krishna's chest mm -hmm. or the bouquet in Radharani's hand. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm yes. simply their servant. Yes, yes. See? Yeah. So in this way, we can want to go to the garden, <clears throat> Yes, you see, because yes. we know that yesterday this tomato wasn't quite ripe. Right, right, right. Yes. But today, I think, you know, yes. by the conditions and the weather and the sun and the rain and that Bhakta tomato will be giving some more tomatoes for Radharani's <laughs> tomato yes, chutney yes. or Krishna's garland or Chris, Radharani's bouquet. It yes, becomes yes. exhilarating yes. that let me go to the garden. Correct. Correct. So nice. again, um, I've got to go to town to, to the calendar store and now it's you know, Christmas time and everybody's buying calendars. So I, right. I've got to go to the you know this store or that store. I'm going to be stuck on a 403 for, you know, right. uh, you know yeah, the four hundred three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so unfortunately, in this way, it changes the yeah, yeah. desire <clears throat> and economy. Of course. Yes. Well, that's all connected with consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. Love consciousness, proper understanding, and uh, that uh, that's an integral part of our whole. That can only happen when we become localized, mm -hmm. and, and that's an integral part of our. Of Vedic culture. Vedic culture is, uh, you know, land cows means you become localized. Mm. You, you can't just be flying all over the place. Mm. You, you have to milk your cows, yeah. you have to whatever, you know. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's, that's the actual culture. And, and that's how we, uh, every single day, very easily, more easily, can connect with, with Krishna. So that's. You don't really have to make a PowerPoint on this. <laughs> well, it goes to, I kind of abbreviated it, it's, it's a bit longer. But it's, <laughs> I make a, lo a long PowerPoint on this. Yeah, but it's, you know, it, it, it helps the devotees to, Absolutely. You know, yeah. to have that, uh, yeah. that taste, that yeah. attachment yeah. to where, you know, like Bhakti Phil, you know, yeah. I would pick flowers every day 
Um, right now, flowers are finished, the garden is finished, right. but I would pick flowers every day and just profusely decorate. Yes. But that was one service I gave to Dr. <clears throat> Phil. Okay. That every day he would come, mm -hmm. he would pick flowers to decorate the altars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when he's picking flowers, he also helped to grow. Yeah. Um, but he's thinking, oh, yes, now for. Um, for Gary Rice today, we will pick so many of these and so many of these. He became very artistic, yeah. you know, with the dahlias and the marigolds and the yeah. roses and, yeah. and the jasmine and like this. Yes. And it became a, you know, yes. it was occupying his consciousness. Yeah. Not that he's, you know, picking flowers for his, you know, yeah. Valentine's, uh, yeah. but right. he's picking yes. flowers, you know. Yeah, for like Krishna. So, Lord, um, yes. <clears throat> so now he was a bit... Um, Deflated because the no more flowers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So he's looking forward to next spring. I see. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Actually, uh, I was in uh, India just before coming here, and uh, I was mentioning how uh, one one um, one family where I was staying overnight, and, and and they they have antiques and whatnot, and, and he was making the point how. Not that long ago in India, you know, all the members within a community, and, and that was pretty well everywhere, were somehow connected with the temple, mm -hmm. yeah. were performing activities every day, you know, for the service, like in Jagannathpur, you know, mm -hmm. so all the villages around, mm -hmm. they make uh, earthen pots, uh, they make all kinds of uh, <clears throat> articles that are needed for the deity worship in, in different ways. So in the Vedic culture, that's what's so nice when, when Krishna does become, you know, we know how in the middle of a village there is a temple mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because Krishna is the center of their lives. Yeah. And everyone is, it's not that you just go and, you know, offer obeisances for two minutes you become active in so many ways. In Bali, for example, that culture one can still see because um, to live in a village, to live in any village in Bali, Bali is like the only island where majority people are Hindu. Mm. And, and, and about this was explained to me by our devotees some years back. At least going back a thousand, a thousand years ago, some sages kind of made a blueprint of how we should be living on this island. Mm. And they established temples on the four corners. They did everything according to Vastu. And they have what they call Pura. Pura are temples. And uh, if you want to be part of a village, you have to you have to attend the temple functions. You have to attend for cultural programs. And they have many cultural programs. They're always celebrating this festival, that festival. They're decorating very nicely. And they're bringing food to the temple, the Matajis are cooking, and the, the Prabhus are doing whatever different things as well. This is Vedic culture. It's like a Vrindavan, it's, you know, everyone is, is, is thinking about and remembering Krishna, you know, uh, and serving him in different ways. Um, so this, this, is, this is the um, <clears throat> so different from. <laughs> what we uh, experience today because everyone's consciousness is totally, uh, you know, modern day society especially, totally uh, off. I mean, you know, there's no concept, um, it's totally materialism and whatnot. So we can begin to see this, of course, when we come to a temple. That's why Prabhupada also began with temples. We can see this even more or expanded when we come to community. And then if, if gradually we have villages established like that, then then everywhere becomes like like Vaikuntha or like or like Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. So that was Prabhupada's vision of course. But, but, you know, and, and Lord Chaitanya's vision as well, to, to, to saturate, to bring in a golden era. And the golden era will will of course the main activity will be the chanting of the holy name, but mm -hmm. it will also be you know Reconnecting, reconnecting with the land, reconnecting with Krishna's cows, and uh, reconnecting with um, temple activities, and doing things that are not going to tie us down. You know, you know, like to live in the Western countries, 
Mm. <clears throat> it's so difficult because so much of your energy is is going just for surviving. You know? I was just going to use that hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> In order to survive. It's a survival yeah. mode all the time, and you have no time to Krishna for Krishna. Yeah. yeah. You don't have any time for anything, really. Yeah, yeah. It's just anything, almost, yes. that to cultivate the human spirit. Yes. You know, it's just all... Yes, yes, yeah. So it's it's like, you know, all your energy is, is, is wasted in that way, yeah. and, and, and therefore, that's why traditionally, even up to now, majority of people live in Asian countries, even now. Mm-hmm. If you look, if you study that population, the world population, global population, you still have the majority of people. Oh, yeah. The densities there. Yeah. Yeah, not here, not in America. It's big, uh, wide open spaces. Canada, so much land. Yeah. Oh, Canada is another yeah. example. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Even more so. Canada is a forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have less than 30 million people. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think yeah. about 30 million people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's one of the largest, maybe the largest country in the world now. You know. Just ask Bucky Martin Marsh. <laughs> you know, 8,000 kilometers, I think, east oh, to really? west, whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but uh, it's like, you know, uh, it's forest. Very yeah. few people, you know. Because actually, that's not really that realization, realization I had a couple of years back. Canada is not, don't tell that to the Canadian government. <laughs> <I'll pay the> government. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Canada and such places are not. Fit places to live. Well, I was just going to say. <laughs> I mean, notice that it's very cold. Ah, wow. <laughs> and especially yeah. those forests when you more you go north. Yes. Yeah. It, it is. Right super, north. It's like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Gorgeous and beautiful and you know mystical, but it's very. For two cold. months of the year. Or yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. 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 That's the. Not livable. Mm-hmm. Not. And even if one lives there, you know, I mean, it's it's a whole. The whole life, that in, in order to live in that cold. Oh my God! No, it, it's. You know, it, I mean, humans are not meant to live there. Actually, uh, that's uh, why this hardly. In, in, yeah, that's why in, 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 the, in the shastra, and I, I'm still I'm looking for that verse. There's a verse where it mentions that we should not live in places where coconut trees, mango trees do not grow. Do not grow. Yes. <laughs> and there ain't many mango trees in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I haven't seen one. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, yes, yeah. uh, unnatural. Too. You know, we always thought that uh, if we had it ever to do again, you know, we would have a our project on you know you know a warm place yeah, right. that would avoid all this yeah, austerity. If you had pain. to do it all over again, you'd be born in, in <laughs> another <laughs> climate, but it's not our choice. Okay. But um, yeah. but then again, you know, we're, we're, the land was always so expensive. We couldn't afford. Right. This was so cheap when we first came here. Right, right. It was like unbelievable. Right. You know, like a poor man could get. You know, we were poor and we could get the land. Yes, yes. You know. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, <clears throat> that's a. But that's uh, an integral part of our really culture, and yeah, it's an integral part of what Shri Prabhupada spoke about and wanted and desired and expected, and. Uh, because he and others before him spoke about all of this, you know, in connection with Varnashram, this lifestyle, it's meant to happen. It has to happen. Mm-hmm. It will happen. As you mentioned, mm-hmm. it'll be done in a lifetime. But yeah, it, so that's the foundation, you know, a lot of the foundation is mm-hmm. in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, yeah, the devotees will be forced. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole society will. Correct. And Prabhupada said people will come from the cities by the millions. Yes. We have to be ready to. to well, that's what he. That's the whole the catch here. He says we'll have to be ready. That we have to have these deals because they'll be coming. And then, you know, so you want your, the farmers has to be ready. Yeah. And how do you get that ready when, <laughs> you, know, there's, uh-huh. you know, there's no support to even have it? And, you know, it just seems so. Well, you know, over, you know, what's that expression in English? That. Um, uh, necessity is the mother of the nation. So, yeah, so like that. you have to go with that. <laughs> but the, the main thing that we'll have to be able to do is to feed them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the shelter. service. Yeah, shelter will come. Shelter. And the service that we'll be able to give them, or we will need to give them, yeah. is growing food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. every day everybody is eating. Yeah. 
And, and they have to eat. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And Prabhupada said there's there's four problems you need to solve. Where is food? Right. Where is shelter? Yes. Where is cloth? Mm. Where is medicine? Mm. And these all come from the earth. And where is Krishna? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, first is food, <laughs> first is character, <laughs> first is color. You know, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> wonderful. There, there's a couple of, uh, I'll try and get them to you, um, Shiva Ram Maharaj, speaking about these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell. Yeah. Yes. So we, we um, anyways, uh, one of the reasons I came to uh, Yuga Daven, I'm going around a few places to kind of uh, introduce some of the things we're uh, doing in, uh, in India in terms of our ministry and, and this campaign I was mentioning, 12 years coming up, you know, uh, in January. And um, so especially our different uh, devotees connected with the land already, uh, um, it, it's meant to Kind of like uh, bring us closer together and give us some 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 hope and and, and uh, this directory we hope to come out will will um, you know it's, it's nice to hear about oh there's a new project and oh they're doing this oh, oh they're doing like that you know so um, <coughs> we want to do uh, something that can be uh, updated every year as well yeah 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 so that, that's saying the updating is important absolutely. Correct, yeah. Yeah. So that's something that uh, actually before Go Prima, we should be coming up with some things in connection with North America, with uh, Asia, and uh, South America, possibly Europe as well. Mm -hmm. We have some nice backing.